Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I've got some extra colors sitting on my bench that are dried that I need to use, and I thought it would be super fun to do some abstract paintings with these colors that I have just sitting here. And while we're at it, we can learn a few really fun and neat watercolor techniques along the way. This is a great video to watch if you want to do a few things. One, let's have some fun. Abstract paintings are a great way to take the pressure off of learning and to just kind of let loose and release in case you were having a bunch of non-successes in your previous paintings. It'll let you get a little bit looser and freer and take a few more risks so that you can actually learn the way that the watercolor interacts better. And if you've got extra colors like I do, I have all these dried colors sitting in my palette that I really just need to use so they don't go to waste. And this is a great way to do it because I can just use the colors here and mix up colors for this set. In order to do this tutorial, what you'll need are whatever watercolors you have. You'll need two cups of water, some tester strips, Feel free to use whatever watercolor paper you want to. I am using a Strathmore as well as some Canson XL paper here that I've cut to about 4x4, 4x5, and 4x3 inch squares. You can also use a sketchbook. In addition, we'll need our other typical watercolor supplies, some sort of rag, paper towel, a brush. I'm going to primarily be using a size 10 round brush here, something to tape your paper down to, masking tape, and then something to transport clean water so a spray bottle or a pipette will work great for this. Then if you want to do any of the embellishments that I do in my paintings, you will also want some extra supplies and these are totally adaptable. I'm personally going to be using a black felt tip pen and a metallic gel pen. With the help of a little bit of movie magic, I will speed up my taping this down and slightly organizing my mess of supplies while I tell you a little bit about how this tutorial is going to work. I'm going to actually break down each one of these paintings and we'll work on one from about start to finish. If it has any additional embellishments with other media, I will save that to the very end. But we want to actually work on several of these at a time in order to give them some time to dry. Of course, you can always use a hair dryer to force it to dry a little faster as long as there is not any standing water on the page. Now that we're prepped and ready to go, don't put that masking tape away yet because our first painting we're going to be doing, we're going to be focusing on the skill of preserving white space by using some sort of a barrier, and in this case we're going to be using masking tape. There are a bunch of ways to preserve the white space in watercolor from techniques to actually using something like masking fluid or a frisket, or as we're going to be doing in this one, just masking tape. It's kind of the simplest to do. You don't have to wait for it to dry. So if you were in kind of a hurry to paint, this is a great option. You can either use your tape as it is, or you can do what I'm doing and actually cut it into the pieces that you want it to be and the size. You can also use washi tape for this. Sometimes they come in nice thin strips so that you wouldn't have to do as much cutting. Arrange your tape in the pattern that you would like to preserve the white paper on and however you do this is totally fine. Then it's time to actually prepare our watercolor colors. I am using my leftover ones and I will try to let you know the colors I am using as I use them to mix. But this is a very adaptable tutorial, so feel free to use whatever colors are speaking to you at the moment or that you need to use up. For this first painting, I am going to be using a yellow and this is a permanent yellow light. I will also be using an olive green which I wish was a lighter color green, but it's what I had in my palette and I wanted to use it. And finally, I'm going to be using a Prussian blue for this. I kind of wanted to use all three of these colors because one, they do mix together to make a nice green, but also I wanted to have the green in there that was more of a traditional type green. But I wanted something that would, when it would flow together, would just look really cool and it wouldn't kind of just muddy into browns. So consider choosing colors that are mixable. I started by using a spray bottle and I just spritzed the piece itself just to get a little damp to start. And then all I did was I took kind of a heavy hand with a lot of this color and just dotted it around where that masking tape was. 
We don't need to overthink this too much. Just go ahead and just put it on. If you're not liking how it's flowing, maybe spray a little water on there and get a little bit more flow going. If there's too much, you can suck up a little bit extra of the pigment. If you're wanting to suck up extra of the pigment and you're not aware of how to do this already, you can do a few different things. You can use a paper towel to suck this up, or you can just dry your brush off and then use that as a little bit of kind of a syringe. It actually has a little bit of a sucking power to it. So I just wipe my brush on my paper towel and then I suck up some of that excess pigment and water and just kind of help to control a little bit of how this is going. We want this to kind of just do what it wants to, but we also want to make some decisions and just kind of how we're feeling about it. Then we want to wait for this to dry. Just set this aside and wait for it to dry before you actually attempt to take off that tape. You don't actually need to wait for this one to be completely finished before moving on. You can just set it to the side while it dries and work on another one. But just as a reminder, here was my finished product once I removed all the tape. I like it. I do wish I had not worked the color quite so much. Moving on to painting number two while painting number one dries. In this one, we're going to be taking advantage of the shape of our round brush as well as doing some wet on dry paper techniques, but also letting them bleed together and doing a bit of charging. If you're unfamiliar with the term charging, basically what it is is when a color is already wet and then another color hits it that's also wet, it's going to kind of charge some of that color into it. So that's going to be kind of the fun technique we're learning here. This one goes super fast. I will explain it as I go through it, but also I will do a second replay. And for this one, you want to choose maybe three, four colors. Start with your lightest color on the top and just take advantage of the shape of your brush and put down three or four of those lightest colors. For me, it was a yellow, a permanent yellow light. And then I moved into a crimson lake. And on some of my brush strokes for the crimson lake, I intentionally touched the yellow one in order to make it kind of flow and charge. Other ones, I made sure I didn't touch it at all so they could stand alone. And then finally, I moved into that Prussian blue and I did the same thing, intentionally letting some touch and charge and some stand on their own. And then usually I would actually suck up some of the excess water, but I want this one to have a little more texture. So I'm going to leave those drips to just dry as they are because I'm hoping there will be some variation in how pigmented it is when it dries in the puddle versus not. Again, this one moves so fast, so let's actually just watch me do that one more time now that I've explained it, and you can see how you can really quickly make a super colorful and fun abstract piece using this charging technique. Again, while the one you just finished dries, you can move on to this one. We're gonna be working on very similar things in this exercise where we're going to be taking advantage of the brush shape and just moving it in a slightly different way. We'll also be doing a charging exercise on this, which since we're working within the wet portions is kind of a wet on wet technique as well. For our third painting, again, we're gonna be taking advantage of the brush stroke of the one brush I'm using. It's all this size 10, I think technically. It kind of reminds me more of a size 12 brush, but instead of holding the brush vertically and just pushing down to get kind of those petal shapes, I'm actually going to turn my brush kind of to the side and do a slide down using the tapered end of the brush to create kind of a natural brush stroke shape. And I'm going to be, you can choose any color you want for this. I'm just gonna put a few of these marks down and then we want to actually move pretty quickly while these are still wet. So this is a wet on wet technique. And again, it's similar to that charging technique, but we are specifically going to go in and on those wet pieces, we're going to just dot in a different color. Again, use something that's going to mix well with the other color. So I'm using the blue on the yellow and it's going to make kind of a teal green and these will kind of flow. And what you want to observe here, the lesson to learn is based on where you place the pigment into the wet, how much is it flowing around? Because it's going to have different drying amounts based on when you put the brush stroke down as well as gonna be wetter towards the bottom and just see what happens so that you can kind of learn and then you can actually use this in your other paintings once you're better acquainted with how much the water is going to flow 
based on the actual amount of dryness. For my abstract painting, I started with some light colored brush strokes, and now I'm gonna go in with a slightly darker green. It's not much darker, but it's going to be a little darker than that yellow, and I'm going to just place a few of those, and then I'm going to, again, I'm gonna charge or add some other pigment to that already wet space where we put those brush strokes. And I'm actually going to do this with the yellow. And you can see that you can actually add a lighter color while it's still wet into a darker color. And sometimes it will actually make the pigments kind of separate from it and reserve some area. You can also go in and one fun thing I like to do is touch the very sides so that you're gonna get kind of a darker area right at that crease of where your brush stroke starts and then where there is completely dry paper and it will be a little more concentrated there versus as it kind of flows into the other part and it just is really fun play around with some different colors i did go a little gutsy and i added a little bit of a red that crimson lake color to this and technically green and red don't always play that nice together but i wanted to see what would happen so go ahead and experiment a little bit then one of the best ways to actually learn from this technique is to just be a little bit patient after you've placed down some of that color. Don't mess with it too much. Observe it. See how it changes as it dries because this will change a bit. This fourth abstract painting that we're going to be doing actually will have a bunch of different techniques in it. It's going to have wet on dry because we're going to be placing our shapes on dry paper. Then we're going to be encouraging some back runs or that blooming effect. We will also be charging these colors or doing some wet on wet techniques. And we'll also be layering on top of these. I'm going to start with my crimson type color. So this was Crimson Lake, and at this point it has a little bit of blue on it from all my other colors that I've been doing. I'm going to intentionally make just kind of a blob type shape, and I like to do that in some of these paintings because if I'm trying to just make a blob, then I don't have to focus on making a perfect circle or a perfect shape, and I can actually concentrate on some of these other techniques. So we make kind of the outline for our blob shape using a wet on dry technique with that crimson lake on dry paper. Then we're going to actually encourage a little bit of these backgrounds or blooms by taking some just clear water and we're going to Put that in the center to kind of make it have a bit of a gradient, but also drop it in the sides where we added the color already, but it's starting to soak in and dry just a little bit. And then I'm going to charge this a little bit with some wet color while it's still wet and add in some orange. I'm going to make another blob shape using my permanent yellow light, and I'm going to charge that while it's still wet with some of that Prussian blue to get that beautiful teal color. Personally, I added another blob. You're going to want to kind of check and see where you're at. You can make these touch if you wanted. I specifically didn't want them to touch because I didn't want them to run into each other because I want to do that with a bit of layering in a minute. As you can see here, I like to work on a bunch of paintings, so you're going to get a little preview of some of the other ones that are coming up because I let those layers dry before I actually am moving on to this next step on this same painting. And once they're dry, I'm going to make some blobs that are going to both overlap with some of those other ones, but also take advantage of some of that white space so that I get a bit of that pure color that I had mixed up. But just so you can see, when you add some of these colors on top of a dry layer of watercolor, how it doesn't really disturb the color underneath it if you don't overwork it, but it can also change kind of the tone and do a bit of glazing as well as layering to build some depth of color and change those a little bit. Do that with as many blobs as you want, and if you are still feeling like it needs something a little extra, you can add in some extra brush strokes, just kind of plop them in there, and just do what kind of makes you feel good right now. This is where I'm going to leave mine to dry until at the very end of this video I add some additional details. For painting number five, we're gonna be using super loose colors in order to make an abstracted landscape. And we're gonna be mainly focusing on wet on wet here. 
This is going to be a super simple landscape and we want to just break down a landscape into its most basic forms. For me, I want there to be some sort of a sun, so I want a yellow. Then I want there to be some sort of mountain or hill going on and I want kind of a deep steel blue for this. And then I am feeling some kind of red, rocky or desert-esque in the foreground, so I'm going to mix up kind of a rusty orange type color. So those are gonna be my three colors. I think they look really beautiful together. For my yellow, I use a permanent yellow light. I added a little bit of orange to it to just brighten it a little bit instead of it being such a pungent yellow. In order to make my rusty orange color, I took an orange and vermilion. I added a little bit of blue because that's gonna mute it a little bit and then a little bit more red until I got that color that I wanted. And then I'm just going to be using this Prussian blue because I think it's a beautiful blue and I think it's gonna work really well and look really good with those other two colors. Once you've got the colors that you're going to be using for this abstracted landscape, we're going to want to actually wet the entire page that we're going to paint this on. So you can do this with a flat wash brush. I'm actually just going to be using the same brush that I'm using because I like to just not have to switch around a lot, but we're gonna wet that entire page. And then we want to make sure we've got a light source so we can actually see how much it is drying because we want to add our color in at the optimal time of it being kind of damp. So you add in your water, hold it up to the light source, and at first you'll notice that there is just a sheen and a glisten on top of the paper. As it starts to soak in a little bit, you're going to be able to start to see some of the texture through, and then as it soaks in a little bit more, you're going to notice that it's going to be a little more mattified and less shiny. Right between that shiny, textured, and the mattified stage is the best time to add this in. I didn't do this completely on all of this, but uh, you can kind of see, and this is a good way to learn this lesson of, oops, it was too wet there when I added it. There was way too much flow, or it was maybe a little too dry. And so that's why we're doing the abstracted landscape. So just look at me watching the, uh, the colors kind of change and how much it mattifies and making that decision on when I think it's ready to go. This technique is really good for having nice soft edges on things. And so I went ahead and I just kind of plopped in that yellow color that is going to be my sun. And you can see that mine dripped down a little bit. And that's because my paper wasn't kind of evenly coated. And I had a little bit extra too much that once I added that extra color on there, it did kind of just want to run. And it's okay because this is abstracted. And it's why we're learning and experimenting with this here so that you can see kind of what's going to happen. I went ahead and just added in my other colors. I'm in general working with the rule of thirds here on my page. So in the top left third is where I want my sun. Then I'm going to have the middle third comprised of kind of my mountains and steely type color. And the roughly third bottom is going to be my kind of deserty foreground color. Feel free to play in this point. We're still just doing wet on wet te techniques, so you can either lift out some color if it's too concentrated to give a little variation. You can drop in some more pigmented color in certain areas if you wanna make sure it's concentrated. I even decided to take some of that yellow down into my orange color to kind of balance it and give it a little variation. Just play with this and keep it loose and let it dry kind of how it's going to dry and you're going to uh, be patient don't overwork it and just let it do what it's going to do so that you can see what happens when you do give watercolor a chance to kind of do what it wants to. Then this painting is technically quote unquote done until we add our final details on it, but you want to make sure that it's really dry before we do that. So just set, it, set this aside and let it dry while we work on some of these other paintings. The final painting for this tutorial that we're going to be doing, you might see a sneak peek of another one that we'll do at another time, but the final one we're gonna do here is we're going to be doing a wet on dry paper technique, and we're going to be taking advantage of this brush in a different way. We've used it vertically and made kind of petal type shapes. We have used it 
horizontally and made nice kind of thick lines that are vertical. And now we're going to be using it horizontally and we're going to be kind of combining a mixture of the wet on dry as well as making long brush strokes that are going to dry the brush out and it's going to kind of be a dry brush technique where you're going to get a bit of the paper actually showing through because the paper is not going to be completely saturated since you don't have a ton of color in there. Just go ahead and do some quick brush strokes with some really vibrant colors and then let it dry. All right, if you followed along and did this at the same time as me and in the same order, most of your painting should be pretty much dry at this point. So you can go ahead and take off all the tape from the first three that we did. I don't think I'm going to embellish those any. Make sure if you're going to be removing the tape to use a hair dryer in order to release that adhesive so you don't tear your nicely painted paintings. And then on this second page, you can see I've added a little geode there. I've got another tutorial if you want to watch that on my YouTube channel as well on how to paint those. But we're going to be embellishing the three other paintings on here just to give them a little more oomph and kind of work in that mixed media. So this was something I didn't realize at first that I could do with watercolor was actually add other media on top of it. And it's one of my favorite things to do. So you should give it a try. For that last painting that we did, once it was dry, I'm just taking my felt tip pen and I am going to be just making kind of a starburst with a ruler so that I've got nice straight lines. You don't have to use a ruler. It could actually just be nice strokes with the pen. I do also go back with a metallic gel pen and I added some circles just to kind of, again, add a little variation and a little more pop to this one. Now to do the mountain one or the kind of landscape that we have channeled. And this is going to be one of the more difficult ones because you're going to need some kind of drawing skills. Not a ton. If you want to follow the ones I have here, you should have a pretty easy time doing that. The first thing I'm doing is I am drawing in the sun, kind of in the center of that yellow blob. And I'm going to specifically make a couple circles so that I don't feel pressured to make a perfect circle and it'll look a little, little more intentional when I have maybe two or three rounds there so that it looks like I made some variation on that on purpose. Then my next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very generally outline the separation of colors to get an idea of my mountain shape a little better. Then you can see where I had lifted some color and I had added some darker colors so that there's a little bit more variation in there. And I'm actually going to outline some of those areas that are in between the little peaks to be kind of the recessed areas of the mountains to give them some depth and if we do these and take a look at where the sun is you want to do it on the opposite side of the peak in order to kind of indicate that it's in shadow and then I just did some parallel lines in there to give it a little bit more darkness which is going to just kind of hint to hey this is further back it also doesn't have sun shining right on it and it's going to just kind of look real nice. Um, the, in general, the sun in my painting is kind of coming from the backside of the mountains, but you can do yours how you want. And then I added a few extra lines and just a few scribbles to the foreground to kind of indicate that maybe there's some shrubbery or some different plant life going on there. And we've taken a super abstracted color piece and turned it into something a little more realistic. And sometimes this is fun to do with those wet on wet techniques is just see what a painting gives you and then turn it into something else. And finally, we're going to be doing one of these kind of loopy, bulby type long strings that are seen all over the internet lately. Um, there's a ton of different tutorials on doing this, but sometimes this is a fun thing to add in when you don't really know what else to do, but you want to give a piece a little more movement. So you start by just dropping in some dots to indicate where your centers are going to be. I kind of made mine go on a little bit of a curvy path and a diagonal, and I also varied how far apart those were from each other. Then all you do is you make some connecting lines between those dots and you can make as many layers on each node as you want to and just kind of control and make some bigger and smaller and it really does just kind of help to bring it all together. 
Thank you so much for spending some time doing this with me today. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments what your favorite one to do was and also what your one that you need to do a little more work on is. If you want to share your results with me through Instagram, I love to see the pictures. If you want to see more testing videos where I test out different variables for fluid painting, want to see any watercolor tutorials or some other art supply testing, subscribe to my channel. Or if you just want to see some of the art that I create, it's really varied. You can follow me either at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts on Instagram or Rebel Unicorn Crafts on TikTok where I make some, some funny videos as well as some tool talk videos. And I hope that you have a magically creative day.